Good Thanks, morning. everybody, for joining us. We are doing this tutorial webinar because, um, as you all know, as members of Government Contractors Association, we have partnered with GovDirections, and they are um, a great strategic partner of ours. They have been in the industry for well over 10 years, and Mark can give you more information about that. But basically, they are a bid matching platform. So as a valued member of the Government Contractors Association, you now have access to this this powerful um, bid matching tool. So I'm very excited to present Mark Knowles, and I didn't even introduce myself, and you probably all know me. I am Myra Cisse, the VP of Service Delivery here at GCA, and um, I'm going to turn the screen over to Mark so that he can chat about how to get the best value from GovDirections and this powerful tool that you now have in your arsenal. Mark? Good morning, Myra. Thank you for hosting this webinar so we can walk through GovDirections. My uh, agenda today is to show you some powerful tools that we have built that allow you to have access very quickly to information, primarily local and state government um, procurement opportunities. Uh, but first, just quickly about GovDirections. So we are, have been around for 10 years in, in Atlanta. Um, we have offices in Boise, Idaho, and also a support staff in Brunswick, Georgia. We serve just over 80,000 registered companies throughout our platforms, including our social networking systems. Um, the systems were built for organizations to you know, quickly go through um, and pull active local government, state government, and federal government RFPs, bids, and requests for qualifications. Um, in 2016, we will deliver just over 1.4 million bids to registered companies. That information is streamed actively online throughout, through their accounts, and then we deliver it each morning via personalized email on a, on a daily basis. Our team includes primarily research staff. Um, instead of each individual company having on-site research, we uh, built a cooperative, and we have just right now at uh, approximately 18 researchers working on behalf of our organizations. Um, our researchers have have um, good experience within local government, some 20, 25 years of working in and around local government procurement. We'll quickly go through today and first try to talk about why information is key, and then second, finding the best opportunity to understand the marketplace itself for you. Uh, and I'll show you some searches and settings to help you pinpoint the perfect RFP, and then we'll review some past uh, award information which can help you forecast and know the, the market better and then help you understand where to, to, to find information to help you sort of see over the hill so that you know what is upcoming. And I'll talk about some additional resources we have at our site that will be that's also useful for you. Uh, but quickly a quote for, uh, from Thomas Edison, uh, we, you know, the reason a lot of people do not recognize opportunity is because it usually goes around wearing overalls looking like hard work. You know, what you'll quickly find working in local government or trying to learn about local government is that it does require uh, hard work to find that information. It's all over the place. And that's where we step in and try to offer a solution for your company. Why is information key? You know, the access to information in a, as quickly as possible um, at the local government, especially in the state and then the federal, is, is imperative in order to make sure you're able to win that government contract. Um, oftentimes, and unlike the federal government, which you, where you may have a 60-day window uh, to, to submit a bid or an RFP, the local governments will frequently uh, request qualifications or quotes um, within a two- to three-day time frame. Um, every, every local government is different, so getting quick access to information is, it is key to success. Um, so basically, personal experience, uh, I'm also a consultant with local governments. But my prior background training was working in human resource management and classification and compensation systems and helping build those for, for local governments. And, you know, every local government uses my consulting type work. And, but for me to, to have tracked that, it was, it was really impossible. Um, some 80,000 different organizations throughout the United States. So when we initially built our, a, a platform, we actually built governmentbids.com in 1998. Um, and we brought that first to market. It was built around our internal needs 
in, our, in terms of trying to find information quickly, and then we, ex we move forward by offering those services to others. We, of course, we've, we founded government beds. We sold that in, 19, excuse me, in 2002, and then in, a, in, a, in about a four-year time frame, we decided to come back with GovDirections, which is a much more powerful platform and provides additional information, more directions about how to grab that contract. Um, yeah, I think you've probably heard these numbers over and over again. The federal marketplace is, of course, a whopper, $460 billion. But sometimes people forget that the state and local market is also a very powerful marketplace, some $160 billion in, in annual opportunity estimated. Wow. You'll see that the FedBiz Ops uh, is you know, basically a platform where you as an individual can go and see every single um, federal government opportunity that's active. It's a centralized location. On any given day, there's about 27,000 listings within that system. But you'll find also very quickly that the local government marketplace and the state government marketplace, um, these are included your state offices, your, for example, your Department of Motor Vehicles, your Welcome Centers, um, other uh, types of um, human resource activities within the state, human services. Um, and for example, we're in Georgia with the Georgia Procurement Register. Every state has something like this, um, 50 or so, plus then you look at the provinces of Canada where most of us can do business, as well as the territories of the United States. So we, there we go from one central source to 50 plus sources very quickly, not aggregated, not in one location. And then as, as you move to a different level, the local governments in the United States are quasi-governments, you see all the different layers. Um, here's a census map from two, 2012. And here we're talking about cities and counties, um, school districts, special districts, like hospital districts, airport districts, parks, other types of districts that are out there on an active basis issuing procurement. In fact, we have you know, right at 40,000 cities and towns and counties along um, of, of active procurements. And so, for example, we're in the Atlanta area, and just within you know a one-hour radius of Atlanta, we're talking about over 800 different uh, local governments that you can potentially win a contract with. But you'll see it's fragmented, um, but that doesn't mean it's broken. Uh, it, it's basically, it, the system itself works um, and allows each individual governing authority to have control over their, their own procurement. Um, and fortunately, the internet has, has opened up that, that marketplace for most businesses. And the problem is information overload, though. It's just where do you find all of it? And you got to have a solution to pinpoint your opportunity. So if you're not using someone like us, and we hope you do, um, you'll find that you'll need somebody else. Um, it's just it's very, really impossible to, to track every single local government agency. And then for you to sit around and try to register with all those governments, um, hopefully you've went through the federal registration um, using somebody like the, the information like the, the Government Contractor Association has. But you'll quickly find that it would, you could spend all your time simply registering to be notified, not actually winning, but just to be notified. We don't want you to have to do that. Um, so government directions is a way to work smarter. And uh, we'll show you some, just very quick, uh, in just a second, some keywords, industry, location, searches. Um, we'll show you some tools that allow you to search bids by industry, um, search bids by whether or not they're federal or local and state. And then we'll show you um, how to personalize your accounts so that you're able to very quickly uh, learn about bids and active RFPs um, by the minute. And then we'll show you some awards. Um, having access to past awards does help improve your future uh, proposals and gives you a better way to, to um, present information um, that can help you win that contract. And then we'll show you some, some searches. Um, and then we'll look at a couple of the RFPs that are active and kind of walk through their the information that we present to you. And now let's just stop and do some general searches. And bear with me while I move us to a live internet access. No, this is the fun stuff, so we will bear okay. with you. <laughs> okay, so here's our website, govdirections.com. Um, in fact, most people enter our website once they've registered for a free alert or the daily alert in our system. And as a member within the, the government contractors group, you will be able to have that access to information. And, your con and you will we'll enter your, your data through a specific screen, um, and that allows you to then start searching some various tools. 
that you would have within your account. Um, for example, uh, view all bids by your preferences, view all bids by industry, view all bids by state, view awards by your preferences, and so on. And then even searching within specific industries, we cover just that about 120 areas or industries or categories where we, we classify and aggregate information for you. And you're probably already familiar with NAXI codes, and you're able to search our system on your NAXI code. Um, but you'll, you'll also know that local governments aren't fond of, of all those, of using the federal system. I'm not sure why that's the case, but it's just the case. Um, and you'll see that they all have their own different coding system. And often, sometimes they'll use NIGP or the National Institute for Governmental Purchasing. Others have individual states. And, and, but most of your local smaller governments, medium-sized governments, don't use any coding system at all. Um, so they're classified uh, within our system by these common sense categories, but, but tied back to NAXI codes so that you're able to, to do some of that standardized sorting. Um, and, uh, but industry is how most organizations come to us. And just so, for example, um, I, I work in the area of consulting, and you'll see within our system we have consulting equipment, um, we have IT, we have services, we have supplies, and then we have trades. But I have uh, consulting work I do in human resource staffing, and so I would frequently come and look both federal and or just local. In this case here, I'm going to do a local search and see what's act actively out there. This changes by the minute throughout the day, so um, sometimes I might want to check just a couple of times during the day to see what if there's any new listings, and I can do that through a number of ways. But each morning I'm going to be notified um, of, of those opportunities. But I, I work in uh, human resource, and specifically in classification and compensation work, and I can see that all of these RFPs are specifically tied to HR management, but may involve a little bit more than what I do. Um, although I see here's one that I might be particularly interested in here. Um, so I oftentimes find myself using a simple keyword searches, for example, um, searching for opportunity. Uh, a keyword of mine is comment. Compensation management, so I'll do compensation, <clears throat> and I'm able to pull up all the RFPs that have that keyword, and then quickly sort by either state or industry, and then tie back to those opportunities in HR. Here we go, specifically in my in my wheelhouse. Okay, and we'll see. Like for example, this one is is due as a title of salary job description study. Right up my what I'm what I do. It's due on July 11th, 2016. It's in North Carolina, close to where I'm at. A lot of times we want to try to stay in a regional area simply because um, you're much more likely to get a win a contract if you're local. Um, and um, and so I I might find this one of particular interest. Clicking on that opportunity would would take me to a login screen. <clears throat> at this point, it is it does require membership. Um, I log in. And I'm, I'm quickly at the opportunity. So within really three very quick steps, I'm at an active RFP that would take me potentially days to find elsewhere, or, or just pure luck. Um, and, I, and I quickly have my, my original source, <clears throat> but I might want to see some other details here quick, quickly about the organization, and then some details about the individual RFP. Um, we at this point have, a, have achieved our objective of providing research information to you, and you would uh, you would leave us um, and click on potentially the source URL if this is still of interest to you, and go directly to that opportunity. And so here we are, at the City of Lumberton Housing Authority, and they have the RFQ on site. I would then click on that, and here is my RFP. In the past, of course, uh, we you had to call and you had to wait a couple of days for them to send it to you, um, and <laughs> your opportunity time uh, it, it was oftentimes uh, ate into your ability to actually win the contract, no more. Um, information is almost always readily there, and then and you will find at the local government level, just like the federal, is that most RFPs are built in the same sort of way, and have the same um, uh, parts and details. So once I build my own proposal, and I'm able to use that going forward uh, in, in, in more opportunities. I'm typically just changing some small 
parts of my proposal, but learning more about that. Okay, and we'll go back to our web page. Um, just some other quick tools. As I mentioned earlier, um, it's oftentimes helpful to know who's winning a contract, so I know where to potentially bid at. And similarly, the information is uh, is is uh, available by keyword, by company name, or by industry. So if I know my competitor's name, I just want to do some competitive research. But let's just see what what's a good one right right, right now for compensation studies. So I'll search compensation, and I'll quickly look at classification compensation services we were salt. Evergreen Solutions won this contract very recently, $38,000 uh, for the project. Um, I could then click on that, find the details about the, where the comp agency is at, um, other information about Evergreen, and then see other opportunities that they have won recently. Um, in fact, we have a database that goes back years, so I can I can see the contracts that they're winning. So that wow. if, if they're if they're winning these contracts, I know I need to be in that price range uh, in order to to be competitive. And you'll find at the local government level that most RFPs only receive three to five bids or responses on average. Um, your 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 bids are higher because you have less competition. Um, and you're also, you know, the odds of winning one in five is certainly greater than winning one in 60. And so you have, you do have more opportunity there, I think. And I found that to be, you know, it's, it's, it's been a very lucrative type of um, business for our company. Um, we also do private sector um, organizational analysis, um, but local government keeps, it, keeps us afloat. So it's always a combination of, of opportunity. Um, here, you know, maybe I should pause to see if there are any questions um, mm -hmm. as I continue to to walk through. Yeah. But you, good. I know I do have a couple of questions. So it sounds like with this "Who's Winning" tab, we can get information not only about who's won different opportunities, but when we dive further into the company, it'll let us know everything that you've aggregated that they've won. That's correct. That's yes, and powerful. not only that, wow. most of those are very powerful. And most of those, you'll see the winning RFP. The local government will publish that, uh -huh. so you can you can go in and drill down to, you know, for example, in, in this business that I'm in, it, it's frequently it's calculated by a dollar amount per employee, mm -hmm. um, so that so that I I know if it's you know if it's twenty dollars per employee on average to win the contract, that I'm not going to go. I don't. There's no need for me to go in there and bid twenty eight dollars. I'm not going to win, right. so right. I'm going to be right around that. And and having access to that information is is imperative. Now we do not list every single uh, winner of every single RFP, um, essentially because we do find that at that point you do somewhat get information overload. Um, but we do specialize in so if there's a particular area and you want our research staff to pull information in a particular area for you, they're available to do that. Um, but it, okay. it's an aggregation of of sample. And because we have a database of some, I think today we have uh, 35,049 recent awards. Uh, that that sampling is, is 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 enough information for you to to be able to use that information to allow you to project where you need to be at. Okay. Absolutely. Um, yeah, you just can't. There's no reason for me to look at the last hundred RFPs when I just can, I can take five or six and and achieve the same uh, statistic. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and as another part of that is also if you're a, a subcontractor, let's just say you're a painter or plumber, um, and you might want to see who's won some the, the big prime contracts. That information is also av available. Then you can contact that company to look to partner with them in some capacity. Oftentimes exactly. those, yeah, those are opportunities no, that sometimes are not out there. Right. And that's exactly what I was thinking for a lot of our members, because we've got a lot of members of our association who, um, you know, are they, they kind of do a sub of work, whether they're it's pest control or you know electrical or what have you. So having access to that information, knowing who's winning the prime projects, is going to be very beneficial for our members. Awesome. That's correct. Yep. It's, it really is. and you know most most contracts are subprime. In fact, the, the work I do in, in is almost always a, I'm a, 
a subcontractor to a larger company mm -hmm. that's winning this this business. And and I work a couple of days on this type of research. And I just share that simply because that is my my training, my education. And so that's the work I, I enjoy doing um, day to day. And Gut Directions was really built around that to to, to help me uh, learn more about contracts, and then we just expanded to, to where we are at today. Awesome. Um, and you know, just quickly again, just some tools that you have, um, and you know, you can look by state. Most of us are not so concerned about about bids by state, but here you can see all the active bids, um, but within a state. Um, and then you can search by your preferences. And that, uh, let me just go to that direction because you know the last thing I want to do is sort of go through all those steps every single day. Um, so once your account is set up in your organization, you just click on uh, here, um, uh, search by preferences, and it'll go in and say in the last since yesterday, these are the active listings that potentially could match my my um, my industry. And you'll see I'm sort of broad on this one today because um, I'm certainly not a Catholic priest, but it comes up. <laughs> I had that certain push in there to do for demonstration, but just about anything that is, that people procure is being procured at a local government level. Okay, wow. and that's important to remember. Um, but you can then use last two days, uh, last seven days, and just as a very quick reference within our system, um, the way we built it is if you just change the number seven at the end of the URL. Um, and you change it to nine, and then it will do the last nine days. But we but we gave you a, a oh, wow. cheat while them. And our system is built um, with a logic like that. So, and for example, with keywords, you can just you could store as we all become more te technology driven. Um, if I do compensation, then I this is all boolean logic. So then I could you now go here and change that word just to classification. For example, mm -hmm. and then store that in, and always have that as a, a quick um, tool. And we give you other. You want to use more than one, but I, I but I have found it's better to use when you do a keyword search in a system that's already aggregated the type of information. Because what you you know what you we also have to do um, as a if you're not currently using a system like us, for example, I would routinely go and do a request for proposal. For classification and compensation, um, due maybe in June, on a Google search, um, and and you'll see that it certainly brings up potential opportunities. But I'm getting a lot more information than I, ne that I necessarily need. So while this might identify occasionally, um, the truth of the matter is, Fountain Colorado's opportunity will already have been aggregated by us. I don't know if it's the keyword of Fountain. We'll find it. Let's just see. I'm getting water fountains, I think, but <laughs> let's see here. That is employee compensation and reclassification. So let me just do compensation again. Yeah, hopefully it's here. Let's see industry. Well, I saw Arizona when we first did that. So Colorado. Or what's that? Colorado. Yeah. And I think it's because that one's actually expired now. So on, on the web, but. Let's just see. So it's coming up. So one quick question for you um, on that. Um, when someone signs up initially, you know, through their gov, uh, government contractors association membership, and they sign up for Gov Directions, is there a profile page where they can set these preferences so That's that the correct. system knows what to email them every day? As you as you set up your account when you register. Um, you start off with the first screen of registration um, mm -hmm. that will ask you some basic information. And then uh, you move to a screen that allows you to, your tool screen, which allows you to set your account settings. And here you can go okay. through and we'll give you some basic information. But we give you a linear list of state abbreviations um, that, and then your industries that you can choose. Okay, and So that if you want to change your preferences, you can give us your and we, we keep a very little um, identity information. Only your email, your phone number is in our system. It, any tr that's all we keep. Um, here you, you decide if you want your daily alert. You know we send out 
roughly 45,000 daily alerts every single day. Um, and you can tell me which states you want, um, and then you can change and you can and you can choose more states, I mean more industries. We do not limit you, but you can limit yourself. So if you wanted mm -hmm. everything in our system, it's available to you, every single thing. Um, but awesome. you know, we only add about 11,000 new listings every day, so you probably don't want 11,000 emails coming to you in the morning. Um, it doesn't. You spend all day going through those. So most people want to isolate it. Um, what you, we typically find is everybody usually wants all of their um, their their states, and we actually do a couple of foreign lo localities as well. Um, and we uh, and then they'll limit their their industries um, to the particular industries that they're in. And and our and our research staff classifies by those industries, so they're able to be able to do that. And if you're not sure what industries that you 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 need, we have a, a full time staff that stands by to assist you with in our Pont City Market location. <clears throat> They'll assist you in profiling your company and making sure you have the right uh, information um, and so that you can tailor those 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 details. And we also have some tutorials on site, um, some videos through our Gov School that allows you it teaches you how to to go about uh, setting up those preferences. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Um, and last, I'll, I'll close with uh, our blog area. Um, we do have articles that are available to, to share with you about learn about learning about you know how to do with business with government. Um, and then we within every within each agencies, we're able to we do what we refer to as our, our business guides. Let me just go here. Um, and local governments will tell you how to do business with an individual agency. Um, how to do business with the city of Tucson, for example. So oh, we'll wow. show you you where you need to register at, and that's frequently updated. Um, and then we also publish uh, events so that if there if there's upcoming events where uh, you're learning about how to do business with government, we'll publish those for you. So, for example, you learn how to do business with Chicago here. Okay, we're about compiling information to save you time, mm -hmm. and that's how we do that. Um, our price structure is very low, even if you weren't with then the Contractors Association. Um, and by virtue of your membership with the Contractors Association, you have access to this system, a very powerful system that will save you ample uh, time and uh, give you much more opportunity than you would probably ever have access to as an individual um, just searching. And I'll stop there. I'm running out of words. <laughs> no problem. This was awesome. I think um, you know we got pretty much everything we needed. We we learned your system, got a chance to dive inside to see how it works in real life. Um, you showed us several different um, functionalities that it has, and then also where to go to get um, questions answered if if our members run into any any um, problems that we aren't able to answer for them. So I I just appreciate you taking time to to do this for us and. Um, you know, can't wait to, to have a lot more members that we um, send to your platform. So thanks well, we for this. Them, huh? So thank you. Okay. No problem at all. Okay. And y'all, thank you so much for joining us today on this webinar. If you've got any questions, reach out to us here at GCA and we'll be sure to answer those. Our main telephone number here is 404-955-8080. And then, um, will be your first point of contact to, to troubleshoot any issues. And then if you've got any further questions or, or troubles, then we can, you know, send you directly to the Gov Directions experts so that they can handle those for you. But um, I appreciate your time. And, uh, you know, we look forward to seeing you on the next Wednesday webinar or one of our Tuesday events. And, Mark, thank you so much for joining us today. Y'all have a great one. Bye-bye. Thank you.